Stetson, tell me how it came to be that Woody Guthrie spent time with you at this beautiful place here in Switzerland called Baluthahatchee. It's curious, you know, I've, I've been relying on my memory, but uh, just a few days ago I found in my files uh, a letter from Woody, it was a first letter he wrote to me, and all the time I've been telling you interviewers that Alan Lomax loaned, him a, loaned Woody a copy of my book by Mother Country, but it wasn't Lomax, it was Alan Sloan, who was a sidekick of, of Lomax. Oh, really? And uh, so I'm correcting the record for <laughs> It was Alan Sloan who gave Woody a copy of my first, first Palmetto, book, Country. Palmetto Country. It came out in '42. In this this letter I mentioned, he said, "Don't be surprised if I come staggering up to your place someday with my guitar, and we'll have some good long talks." And it didn't happen just like that. Instead, I got a telephone call from the Greyhound bus station saying to come get him. And uh, so I drove in to Jacksonville and there was Woody uh, lying on the sidewalk, down to sleep. We brought him on out here. We were, I was living in a, what you might call an abandoned Florida Motor Lines bus out here. And my father had acquired the property as a sort of hunting, fishing place. And he didn't like the socialite friends of his uh, second wife. So instead of putting a, a neat little rustic cottage out on here, he put a, a, a bus and built a lean-to kitchen on it and a full-length screen porch. So that's where I was living. That's where Woody came. What is the deal with his guitar? He, 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 on his guitar, Woody's guitar, he had written the words, This machine kills fascists. That's correct, and there's a story, you know, thereby hangs the tale. Um, my next door neighbor, I was living in one place, and my neighbor in the house next door, we built our house uh, at the same time, an old classmate of mine, an attorney. And uh, every time Woody would show up at Blue Hatchy, these helicopters, Surveillance would spend the days. <laughs> the story was uh, probably still looking for German subs. <laughs> and the subject of peace, I remember he said that uh, if we just take take all the profit out of war, there wouldn't be any. You know, just as simple as that. And uh, I think he was right. And as you came through the Woody Room, uh, I think you saw the album of uh, some 80 songs that just uh, recently discovered. Woody had written into one of these yellow legal pads in the spring of 53. In three months' time, he wrote 80 songs. And I got back from Europe uh, eight years later. My African-American neighbors came over. And, uh, to, to, you know, welcome me back home. I said, what kind of people is that living here after you left? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, me and Sandy came over one Sunday morning, drove up and to ask permission to go fishing. And him and her come out, both of them come out buck naked. I said, what kind of people do you call that? <laughs> I said, don't, that's just what he got through. That's just Woody Guthrie. Yeah. So, I said, what did you and Woody talk about? And I said, we didn't do much talking. He said, why not? I said, well, because we knew we were in total agreement about everything. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, I remember we were down at the uh, Crossroads Country Store one day, and some... Uh, uh, black kids playing around in the store. And Woody in a loud voice says, you know, I think little colored kids is a whole lot prettier than little white kids, don't you? And here's this, this store full of rednecks, clansmen, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I, I just got out as fast as I could. I <laughs> intended it to go. But this tree I'd cut, and somehow when I saw it, I 
I hollered, hey, Woody, grab your guitar and get out on that log. And that's what he did. And I had to get out in the mud up to my neck over in here somewhere to, to take the picture. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Playing across the country. And uh, I was in the area, and they invited me to attend and at the end to say a few words. And I forget what else I said, but among other things I said, there will never be a generation which will not need to hear what Woody had to say. This is, uh, what was the very first incident that caused you to start down the path that you went down? What made you go that way? All you guys ask that question. I'm still looking for an answer, you know. <laughs> When, when I get the question in an audience, I, I've been saying that ask not what got into Stett, uh, but rather what got into America to have embraced such evils as chattel slavery and Jim Crow segregation for so many generations. So that's one answer. That's a great answer. A piece of white Chose to look the other way.